that what that doctor said to me and what mm-hmm. the that school's admissions person said to me, they're wrong. Like they're I got wrong. into the number seven PA program in the country. Mm-hmm. And they told me I was not smart enough and I got into a great program. No interviews, no sure. well, I did get something. I got a lot of rejections. Yeah. That's what I got. <laughs> a lot. I graduated with the 2.74 science GPA and a 2.98 cumulative GPA. Whoa. Because I just I messed up a lot because of how my academics were structured. They just I didn't have a good structure with my academics. And, it's, and being first gen, like my parents didn't know mm-hmm. to tell me like you shouldn't do this or you shouldn't do that. I was just kind of they didn't know. The flow. Instead of doing a master's, I did like my own post back. And I, my GPA wasn't good. My personal statement, I didn't know how to write a good personal statement. I had people telling me who never even went to college how to write my personal statement. I look back years later when like what she suggested I should submit and I was like oh that's why I didn't get in How would that's she why know? I didn't get in <laughs> like, it was bad it was so bad yeah. helping others is a calling it's not a job hey everybody my name is Boris I'm a physician assistant with me today is another first year physician assistant student from Rutgers University as you can, as you can tell there's like three people in a row from Rutgers this is number three <laughs> uh because I guess the word got out so special treat we have Brianna who is, hello. like I said, um, oh, she just said, hello. Hi, Brianna. We're dealing with some technical difficulties, as you can see, with the different audio and video settings, but that's not going to stop us. We're going to hear Brianna's story, why she chose PA, how she got in, her stats, and a bunch of other good stuff. So without further ado, Brianna, welcome. Hello. Can you hear me? I can. All right. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Good. Uh, so we're going to ask Brianna about why she shows the physician assistant profession, uh, her journey, her stats, her advice to PA students and PA school applicants. So without further ado, Brianna, why did you choose the PA profession? I chose the PA profession because I felt like this was a profession that fit me as a person and it fit my personality. So when I, I was probably a sophomore in college and I was working at my dad's restaurant and I fell and I had this big work accident and I was bleeding everywhere and I encountered my first physician assistant at an urgent care and she like showed me so much compassion and she showed me so much she just looked like she loved her job and I was like hmm I'm curious to know what she does and you know why she left her job so much because I didn't really I didn't know about the PA career at all all I really knew was doctors and nurses and I was like that's that's all I knew that's all that my parents told me about that's all that they really talked about in school so I was curious to know like what does she do and you know why does she love her job so much like she loved it so I went to Winthrop University and we had to do seminars as a biology major and during these seminars they brought in different professions they brought in like pharmacists they brought in nurses doctors and they brought in a PA one day and this PA talked about his career and he was like telling us all about the career and I was so intrigued about everything that he did I went to a college that wasn't like meant for um like science majors specifically but I was a biology um, major but it was more so geared towards like education like teachers and like training teachers and stuff like that so they didn't really have all the resources available as like another school who was like more into like um, doing the medical stuff and just having like pre-med and pre-PA. They didn't really talk about that. They talked about more education. So when this PA came in, I was like, oh, okay. I'm very interested in this. Did my own research. I was like, okay, this fits me. And then also I shadowed, I shadowed a um, physical therapist. I shadowed nurses. I shadowed doctors. I shadowed PAs and, through all the shadowing, I learned that the PA profession is meant for me. I think that all professions are important. Every single person on the medical team is very important for the patient. And I appreciate every field, but PA, I think that fit the best with me and my personality and who I am. I really, I'm glad that you brought up shadowing because a lot of people ask me like, how many shadowing hours do I need to be competitive? And it's mm-hmm. less about hours. It's more about exactly what Brianna just told you is she shadowed mm-hmm. everybody. 
Right. You know, like she she had her initial like introduction to medicine with a PA and it would have been easy to say like, no, that's it. That's all I want to do. But she did her due diligence and she shadowed probably a doctor, maybe a nurse, uh, a physical therapist, a bunch of different options just to see what she would want to do. And mm-hmm. then she landed on PA. And like talking about that in your personal statement, in your interviews, that just does a lot more for you than simply saying like, oh, I just always wanted to be a PA. Right. You know, she did her research. So that's cool. Also, I thought it was funny that you said like, why do you like your job? Nobody likes their job. <laughs> it's like, I mean, when you find people that are passionate about their work, yeah. A lot yeah, of she was just so happy. I was like, she's just walking <laughs> around. She's happy. and She looks like she's enjoying her life. And the doctor's walking around like so stressed out. But she's like, la, 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 la. I love my job. I <laughs> love what I do and I do it well. So I love it here. And I'm like, I'm going to love it when I do my job too in the future, when I have a career, I want to be just like that. I want to be happy. And I want to be like, just walking around with like butterflies all around me. Like (laughs) this is the dream job for me. So yes. (laughs) I think I talked about that when I was like choosing the profession. It's like, you never really meet an unhappy one. Right. I've never met an unhappy PA ever. Not that I can think about. Yeah. No, they're all happy. Like overall. Yeah. We'll get stressed. If I get slammed, you know, I'm also at the urgent care. So I get slammed and like nine people walk in 10 minutes before closing. Yeah, I'll be probably a little stressed. But overall, yeah, I'll I'll be pretty dang happy with my job and and my choice. Mm -hmm. Uh, So, yeah, I noticed that, too. Yeah, definitely. Uh, One thing I kind of I was curious about is you said your dad's restaurant. Mm -hmm. So dad's not a doctor. Dad's not a doctor. My parents didn't go to college. I'm a first gen. Ooh, so, okay. um, yeah, my dad has a restaurant. My mom, she works with kids. So she worked with like um, little babies. Awesome. So she takes care of kids all day. So she has a very rewarding job too. But mm-hmm. I'm a first gen. So it was really, really hard trying to like navigate through college and like navigate all the ins and outs, ups and downs, the application mm-hmm. process, going through FAFSA and going through everything by myself. And I, I made a lot of mistakes. Mm -hmm. a lot of mistakes in that process because I didn't know what I was doing so I was just doing whatever really and there were people who told me like oh you shouldn't do this and you shouldn't do that and you should do this and you should do that but I realized like they gave me really bad advice they didn't really know what they were talking about well they might have thought they knew but looking back I'm like okay I wish that someone would have said you know take this class first I took a lot of my um, upper level classes before I took lower level classes. So I took anatomy, physiology, and microbiology before I took biology one and biology two. That didn't make any sense, but that's what I did. So it's like, I didn't have how a lot did, of good guidance. <laughs> how did your college let you do that? Didn't you have like an advisor? I did. And they didn't say, hey, you should probably take the prerequisites before the actual They sure course? didn't. Nope. Wow. <laughs> they didn't. So I didn't oh, take biology God. one until after I graduated college. Wow. Actually. Yeah, and that was my first time taking it. I was like, this is kind of crazy. But, you know, that's that's the way my journey worked. But I think with my journey in doing that, I do think that it had a negative impact because it was like trying to understand the upper level stuff before having an understanding of the lower level stuff. I had a lot of C's on my transcript because I just, it was hard for me to grasp everything when I didn't have like the foundational knowledge of the sciences. So when I graduated from Winthrop, I graduated with a 2.74 science GPA and a 2.98 cumulative GPA. Whoa. Because I just, I messed up a lot because of how my academics were structured. They just, I didn't have a good structure with my academics. And and being first gen, like my parents didn't know Mm -hmm. to tell me like, you shouldn't do this or you shouldn't do that. I was just kind of they didn't with know. The flow. Yeah, they didn't know. So I was just like, with the flow and that's that's, that's like, what worked. <laughs> that's so unfair. Like that's like a, an advantage nobody really spells out. It's mm-hmm. not even like socioeconomic status necessarily, like money helps. Or right. Whatever. But it's mostly just like parents that went to college and knew what the heck they were doing. Exactly. Because the biggest thing, because if my kid comes back from their freshman like first year first day of freshman year and they're like yeah i'm signed up for microbiology and a and p and i'd be like junior like, what about like intro to chemistry right like, no, 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 we're gonna redo this let's go <laughs> but like your parents didn't know that because they didn't they, take the classes so right that's just, oof. yeah how did you conquer that how did you like get over that gpa and that rough start and still get into such a competitive school 
I had to take a lot of classes after I graduated. So instead of doing a master's, I did like my own post back. So once I graduated, I took, I retook a bunch of those classes. I got C's in, I got an A in it. And then I um, took some other science classes that I didn't take before so that I can help like boost that GPA. So I took maybe about 12 or 13 classes after I graduated, whether it was retake or taking it for the first time. So that helped boost my GPA from what I had to a, I think I ended with a two or a 3.12 science GPA and a 3.29 cumulative GPA. Yeah, that's what it we, was. Can we just stay there for a sec? So I'm mm -hmm. trying to do the math. So 12 classes is, let's say four classes a semester. That's three whole semesters. Mm -hmm. So you did like a year and a half post back on your own. Well, it was spread out. I had like a total of six years. Oh, like <laughs> six years. Yeah, I took like a six year <laughs> gap. Because okay. <laughs> it's, it's crazy because when I first applied, I applied in the 2018 and 2019 cycle mm -hmm. and nothing, no interviews, no, oh. well, I did get something. I got a lot of rejections. Yeah. That's what I got. <laughs> a lot. I was getting a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and I, my GPA wasn't good. My personal statement, I didn't know how to write a good personal statement. I had people telling me who never even went to college how to write my personal statement. I look back years later on like what she suggested I should submit and I was like oh that's why I didn't get in How would that's she why know? I didn't get in <laughs> like, it was bad it was so bad yeah. and then also <laughs> like I didn't have a whole lot of um patient care experience hours and I didn't have a whole lot of um I did have a lot of volunteer because I wasn't a sorority too in college mm -hmm. but um as far as shadowing I didn't have a lot of shadowing hours either at that time in 2018-2019 but um yeah that's how i i think i lost the question what's the question you asked <laughs> i talked no much. i mean you were telling your story it, it started with the same question but just like one thing i'd like to revisit so like fixing a low gpa lots of people ask how to yes. do that there's yes. basically three options three good options one is just like a standard post back mm -hmm. two is build your own post back like brianna did just yes. kind of take classes that one you need to either retake or just like extra classes to boost your GPA. Uh, so that's two. Three, you could do a master's like Elijah did. A master's in like yes. physiology, biology, mm -hmm. something like that. You know, right. and if you do well, that could help. Right. Uh, so there's a, a lot of ways out of this. Brianna chose option two to like build her own post back over six years. Man, you you were committed. I was committed. You were committed. I was committed. I was On a like, level of zero to James, I'd say you're like an eight. <laughs> James is a 10 out of 10 there. He, yeah. 10 years. Yeah two master's degrees, got in once, then had to get in again. Like that, we'll never see another James, but like after him, I'd say you're, you're a top dog there <laughs> as far as like struggles to get in. Yeah, it was, it was a struggle. Like even my second struggle. cycle, uh -huh. I, I think I retook like maybe two or three classes at that point in my second cycle. And it was like the 2019 to 2020 cycle. So right, you know, right before COVID. So I was taking, I think I was taking like microbiology and anatomy and physiology in 2020. And we had that big gap. We had the spring break. And then the mm -hmm. next week they said, don't come back. Yep. And after that, they were like, don't <laughs> come back no more. <laughs> uh -huh. So that was hard. That was hard because I'm like, dang, like I'm trying to take these classes and I was working full time. So it was, it was really hard. So I took a lot of those classes like in a big gap. So most of those classes happened like during the COVID era. So like a lot of them had to be online and proctored and it was just really hard. So I'm like, I'm not used to taking science classes online. Like it just didn't make sense to me. Like I wanted to be in person so I can do like all the microbiology stuff so I can look at the cadavers in the anatomy lab or so I can look at, do hands-on stuff. But it was hard because it was COVID and they didn't let nobody in school so it was it was really difficult so during that time I was like just taking this class and then I, think I took like three classes and I took like two classes and I took three more classes it ended up being like 12 or 13 I can't remember the number but it was a lot a lot of money but you know it's worth it I'd say so with like the final goal just like firmly in mind like you knew where you were going mm -hmm. as long as it takes you were just kind of like throwing stuff at yeah. the goal and eventually you got there 
Yeah, and it, it sucks because I had people along my journey. Like when I was still a junior in college, I had a dermatologist and she told me, she's like, you're not smart enough to be a PA. You're not. And you're not going to do that. She so said you you're not go- smart enough? She told me I was not smart what enough to What prompted her to say that? Because she saw my grades. She saw my GPA and she was like, you're not smart enough for this. So you need to go ahead and figure out something else. And then I can help you along that way. But PA, just give it up. And that hurt. That really hurt me at that time. And I was, I was still a junior in college. So I was like, you know, I still have time to pick up my grades. Like, I'm, I'm just having a tough time right now because, like I said before, I took the upper levels before I took the lower levels. So I'm like trying to balance out everything. And then when I went to Winthrop, I had to take some lower levels. And then I already took some upper levels. And I'm like, okay, I'm having a hard time trying to like navigate like, what I should know, what I shouldn't know, and like just trying to figure out how to study and stuff like that. So that's what prompted her to say, like, don't do PA. So then I went to go get my CNA certification. And I was like, okay, you know, I'm a CNA. Maybe this, maybe this should be it for me. <laughs> Cause she told me, you know, she told me I wasn't smart enough. So this, maybe this is it. So I did start working at, as a home care tech. And I was like, okay, this is rewarding. And I like it. But this isn't for me. Like, I, I do appreciate it. And I love like what CNAs do and like nurse techs do and stuff like that. But I just wanted more out of the career. And want I wanted to be able to do more for patients than just cleaning them up or just, you know, helping them to the bathroom or driving them to appointments and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So that was one really, really big discouragement through my journey. And but now I'm like, I'm glad she said that because I get to prove her wrong. Like, yeah. I still work hard towards my goal and I prove her wrong. And I, I want to write her a letter and say, I made it. You know, I'm it's in the be top. like, are you hiring? Right. <laughs> Not that you actually want to work with her, but like, just be like, hey, by the way, like, imply right. I made it because, you know, PAC or whatever. Right. Uh, but, well, two things about that. I had one in mind and I forgot it, but. As like as somebody in an authoritative figure, like a freaking doctor, a dermatologist, or mm-hmm. a PA, I would even say, mm-hmm. it's like you have to understand how much people take what you say seriously, right? And especially like at work, if you're the leader, which as a PA you probably will be, as a doctor you certainly will be. Like people listen to you, and they like they take what you say seriously. And some people aren't used to that. Like I definitely wasn't very much used to that when I started working. And then, like, I would get mad that the staff weren't doing certain things or that they were ever, but, like, then I realized, oh, yeah, I didn't tell them to do those things. Mm-hmm. So they can't mind read. And then I also told them to do the exact opposite. So, like, but they never stopped doing the opposite. Right. They were just waiting for their next order. And it's like, oh, shoot, I was supposed to give that order. Right. So it's like everything's working as it should. They're listening to me, but I didn't realize, oh, wait, they're listening to me. <laughs> it's, it's my job. Sorry. Uh, how do I turn this off? There we go. It's my job to, uh, it, it's my job to like make things go as they should okay. because I'm the leader, mm-hmm. and that's just like something I didn't realize at the time. So right. this lady probably didn't understand how influential she is to this young kid who like wants to do something mm-hmm. and may have like just totally quit her dream completely. Yeah, because of what you told her. Yeah, and it sucks because I still get, I still hear her voice in my head, and it's still, yeah, I still hear her say like, "You're not smart enough. You're not smart enough," and I feel like I need to get her voice out of my head but it's like I feel like it's just going to continue to like rotate in my head because she she made an impact on me like so early on in my college career I was still a junior in college and undergrad so I feel like I personally I would never say that to anybody ever so my goal is to be a mentor to pre-PA students and tell them like you can do it you can absolutely do it and I will be more than happy to help you get there and don't give up on your dream ever. Like don't ever give up on your dream. You're smart enough. You're capable. It might just take some hard work and some dedication, but you can definitely do it. If I can do it, you can do it. And that's my goal as a PA in the future is to help pre-PA students that are, that were in my predicament, but not tell them that they're not smart enough. I would never, ever say that. And I also had another person he was at an admissions person through a school. I won't say the school, 
but I did a health prep program back in 2020 to like help boost my application to help learn about like the whole medical process and like going through the application and doing interviews and doing like um simulate we did simulated patient cases we did case studies we did a lot of things we learned how to work with like other professions so I asked if I could talk to the admissions person their PA admissions person and I was telling him my stats and he was like you can't do it like with these stats you should not be a PA you should just you can do the nurse the nurse route and then be an NP but PA no you're not going to make it and that hurt like I was on a zoom call with him because it was during COVID and I was about to cry and I was like I I literally can't say anything else because my feelings are hurt because you're the second person to tell me and I can't do it and I shouldn't do it because of my grades but for me I realized like your grades don't define you as a person it doesn't define your intelligence. It doesn't define like who you are and what type of provider you can be for your patients in the future. So like, no matter what people say, I want pre-PAs to know like, you can do it. Like don't tell, don't let nobody tell you you can't do it. Not even yourself that you can't do it. You can do it. So that's my goal is to help others in that regard. Cause I've had a lot of negative people tell me I couldn't do it. And I beat all the odds even with my grades. Nice. I didn't realize that you like, I didn't realize that was your story because we didn't really talk much about this. So mm -hmm. one, I didn't realize that many people told you you can't do it. Mm -hmm. Two, I didn't know that the whole story was that difficult and tumultuous and you mm -hmm. had to start from behind as much. So good on you. Very yeah. good on you. That That's a huge hurdle to come up. Like most people definitely will not overcome that. Thank you. It was hard. Absolutely good on you. It was hard. And I was like, if, <laughs> I told myself, if, if I didn't get in the cycle that I did, I was like, I'm not going to do it. But then I was like, no, I'm going to still go. I'm going to go for a four cycle. I'm going to go for a fifth cycle. I will go for a sixth cycle. I'm going to be a PA. Like, I would not give up my dream. I won't give up. Like, it's, it's hard. And it's, there's a lot of people that will be discouraging. But you just got to take those words and twist it up and turn it up mm -hmm. and say, I will do it. I will prove and you wrong. Right. And keep improving. Don't just like you know, say, oh, I'm just going to not listen to this and then not do anything. No, like mm -hmm. keep improving cycle after cycle and you'll, you'll get right. it. Eventually exactly. you keep improving, you keep taking classes, keep getting experience, you'll get in. Mm -hmm. exactly. And also the right program. It, it takes a special program to actually care enough to look at you as an applicant. Yeah, and that's really important too that I want to touch base on. Like, I think it's important to look at a school that doesn't look just at your GPAs. Like, not your GPA is not the only thing that defines you and what your volunteer hours are, what your shadowing hours are, what your patient care experience hours are and what you did overall as a person. That's what I think is important to look for in a student. And also when a students are looking at application, looking at schools, that's important for them to look at with the schools too. Like, will they look at me as a whole or are they on, only going to care about me because of my GPA? So it's like, I feel like when schools decide to accept students based off their GPA, it's like all the other stuff that they did doesn't even matter. And I don't, I didn't want to attend a school that just disregarded everything that I did. I want them to look at my volunteer, my patient care experience, and I want them to look at everything so that they know, like, I can do it. And I will be a really great PA. Yeah, it, it definitely takes a special school to want to put in the effort to find those people. Mm -hmm. But then those people are the ones that make the best providers. They actually value the career because it was so hard to get it. Mm -hmm. And they're not afraid to make changes. They're not afraid to work hard, you know, right. as opposed to someone who, like, anybody, even with all the advantages in the world, mom and dad were doctors. They, like, basically wrote their personal statement for them. They told them to pick the classes. Even that person still did a tremendous amount of work. Right. It's impossible not to. Even that person still had to study their butt off. Mm -hmm. get good grades do this and that get their hours you know what i mean uh so like everybody works hard but i feel like people who had to work extra hard just make you know we need those people yeah like when things are hard the healthcare system's not working or whatever we're the ones that aren't going to quit and right say, okay how do you make this work and exactly. say, oh this sucks i'm just gonna go do something else exactly you know because we had to earn it so I, I definitely really respect that uh speaking of all of your various things that you applied with. What are your stats, if you don't mind sharing, 
Of UBA, course. PCE hours, volunteering. Yeah, I have like an estimate number for my PCE and my volunteering. Okay. But my, at the end, my overall GPA cumulative was 3.29. My science GPA was 3.12. My, um, I think you do like a BCP, like biochem or biology, chemistry and physics GPA. That was 3.08. Um, my patient care experience, I had a little over 5,000 hours of patient care experience. Um, 5,000? Mm-hmm. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah, I did home care. I did um, a nursing home. Nursing home really, really last long. That was really sad. But then I also worked in ortho at a um, level three trauma hospital in South Carolina. So I got a lot of experience for sure. And then for volunteer Ooh, I would say about maybe 200 hours volunteer, I would say. And then shadowing hours between everything I did. I can't even name it. Maybe about like two or 300 because I shadow um, physical therapists. I shadow PAs. I shadow doctors. I shadow nurses just so I can have like a full spectrum of everything. So I can make sure like this is what I want. And then also, like, during that time, people were telling me, like, you can't do PA. I was like, okay, maybe I should see, like, what does physical therapist do? So I shadowed a physical oh. therapist for, like, 40 hours. And then I was like, oh, what does the MD do? So I shadowed MD for, like, I think 60 hours. And then I was like, oh, okay, well, what does a nurse? Well, I work alongside nurses at my job. So I, I knew everything that they did. And then it was, like, occupational therapist. I shadowed occupational therapist for, like, not as long, maybe about 15 hours. And then with PA, I got like maybe 100 hours of PA because I worked in ortho. So I was able to find a PA that was willing to help or let me shadow her in the orthopedic surgeries and in the clinic. So I got like 50 hours with her and it was a lot of fun. And I loved every minute of it. And then I also did online PA shadowing too. So like everything about PA, it was great. So I would say about between everything it was probably about two or three hundred but I, I don't know but i know pa specifically was a hundred it was like a hundred or 105 or something like that i mean it all and counts all of it all counts. counts right <laughs> no that's a tremendous amount of volunteering a tremendous amount of shadowing mm-hmm. and a super tremendous amount of pce yeah so you definitely yeah. stuck out in a lot of ways yeah i did i did you know my gpa wasn't exactly the highest i was a uh, i I think that I was a very holistic person overall. Well, in general, the thing is, you also brought it up like quite a ways, Mm -hmm. you know, because you started with a 2.7 something and you got almost to a 3.3. Yeah. And 3.3, they would say is competitive. So like you took a year and a half worth of classes. Yeah. I did. That's a lot. lot. (laughs) I did. I did a lot. I didn't realize like now that I'm talking to you saying it out loud, I'm like, wow, I really did do a lot. You did but... a lot. You know? <laughs> and that's like coming from someone who also did a lot. Like, you did a lot. Like, <laughs> way more than most people do. Yeah, I was dedicated. I was like, I'm Absolutely. going to be a PA. I'm smart enough to be a PA. Yes, you are. Be, Obviously, you are. NP. I'm going to be a PA. Like, yeah. I love NPs. And I think they're very important, but I'm going to be a PA. That's what I'm going to do. And I would do what I can to get Just like... <laughs> Stubbornly, like, Stubbornly. I'm not doing anything else. This is what I'm doing. Especially because right. you said no. Especially because right. you said I couldn't. So, no, right. good on you for that. Right. No, that, that's absolutely awesome. So, your, your application was actually, like, once you finally got it to where it was, was actually quite competitive, even just by numbers. That's true. Now that you I know? think about it, that's true. You dig into the story a little bit, and then it's, like, way more impressive. Yeah. You know, first year or a first-generation college student, dad owned a restaurant. Mm-hmm. Nobody was in medicine. That's one. Then Mm -hmm. how far you came from where you started to where you came, like all of that together. But your stats by themselves are actually quite good. Oh, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Like I'm not surprised that you were competitive and you got in and everything once you got your stats to where they were. But like you said, it took six years. It took six years. It took a long time. But it's worth it. Yeah. One of my best friends, she is also in the Rutgers uh, PA program with me. And she encouraged me to go to Rutgers information session. And I was like, I love Rutgers. Rutgers is absolutely my dream school. But I told her, I said, I'm not 
good enough to be a Rutgers student. They're never going to accept me, ever. Like, I, I'm just going to waste my money applying to Rutgers. Like, why am I going to apply? Because my my stats aren't, because I think they require like a 3.2 science GPA. And for my science GPA, I didn't have a 3.2. I had like a 3.12. But they allowed you to write, you know, a letter explaining why and what your story is. And I, I explained like how I was telling you, like what happened and, you know, some other things that happened in my life and why I didn't have that, but my dedication, like all the A's that I got after I graduated, it showed my grit, it showed my perseverance to get there. So I think they really like took that into account. And she was like, no, you're going to apply to Rutgers, yep. even if I pay for it, you're going to. And I was like, oh, I don't know, I'm just going to wait That was your time. friend? My best friend, yeah. She's oh also- Oh my God, the, um, cheers to your friend. That's like- Yes, that's cheers to her. She is amazing. She was like, you're applying. And I was like, mm-hmm. oh. And then, like, I ended up being in the very last interview, Whoa. like, the interviews. And it was on Zoom. I didn't even go in person. And I had my interview. Then I got accepted to a school in South Carolina. But I didn't – I wasn't – I was grateful that I was accepted to that school. And I'm forever grateful for that. But Rutgers was my dream school. I love Rutgers. Everything about Rutgers, the faculty, the staff. Even they drew me in with the information session. I was like, wow, this is a family. Like all the students look so comfortable. They could just talk to the faculty and just have fun. They're they're having fun right now. Like I want that in a in a PA program. So I, like a week later, I got that acceptance. I called them and I was like, hey, I got accepted to a different school, but Rutgers is my dream school. So like maybe if I can, you know, hear back from you soon uh, that would be great and then they ended up calling me back like it was a Friday and they called me back on a Monday and they're like you're accepted and I was like oh my gosh I cannot believe it I was so happy I was at work oh, so I couldn't like I couldn't go too crazy because I was at work <laughs> and I wasn't allowed to have my phone so I was like right. I have my phone I, I couldn't like get to it. like I'm really not allowed to have my phone oh at work but yeah they were like you're accepted and I was like I told my friend I was like you were right like, I am good enough to be at Rutgers. I am smart enough to be at Rutgers. That what that doctor said to me and what mm-hmm. the that school's admissions person said to me, they're wrong. Like, what I got into wrong? the number seven PA program in the country. Mm-hmm. And they told me I was not smart enough. And I got into a great program. And I love you it. Should, I love uh, Rutgers. Once you graduate, you need to send them resumes. I should. You know, like, where are you hiring? Not that you want to work with them, but it would just be fun. Right. I, I don't so even too. like the sad thing is they probably don't even remember telling you that. I'm pretty sure. They probably don't. Yeah. But I will, I'll what... remind them. I say, remember like when I, I talked to you back in 2020 and you said that, you know, I should do this or I wasn't smart enough. Try to, you know, draw their memory. I don't hey, know. I, I don't know if I do that. Yeah, I, no, I, I wouldn't, wouldn't do that. that. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't say do that. that. I would yeah. I would send them a resume, but I, I wouldn't go further than that. But yeah. you do what you want to do. Uh, but no, congratulations on that. I actually wonder if telling them, you know, I was expect I was accepted to a different program, if that kind of jogged them to to say, hey, we gotta we gotta accept this person. Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe they were just like already sitting on your acceptance letter and they just had to send it. Who knows? Oh, with Rutgers. Yeah, yeah, at Rutgers. Oh, oh yeah. I Who think knows? So. I think they might have. I don't know. I guess I'll never find out. Uh, you never will, and it doesn't matter. <laughs> No, it really doesn't matter. But I'm actually jealous. Like when I see Elijah's posts and like see how like the vibe of the program is, I'm real jealous. Yeah. It just looks like a really good program. It is. It's like family. Like I, all my family are in South Carolina, but it's like a family away from family. And it's like yeah. I, I do miss my family, but it's like, okay, I don't have to miss them as much because I have my <laughs> other family here, my Rutgers family here. Absolutely. So it's, it's great. And the fact that it's a longer program lets them kind of like spend more time, give you a little bit more mm-hmm. depth where my right. 24 months so we just like sped through for everything right right you know so I'm, I'm a little jealous i like that i got done sooner but also like programs like that i'm, I'm kind of jealous of mm-hmm. so choosing a program see what's uh what's important to you because i just think that the vibe and the like the organization of the Rutgers program i would just personally have rather been in that than the program i went to that being said i'm glad that i got out earlier and started like right. getting money working earlier so it just pick what's important to you Mm-hmm. But it just—it seems like a really good vibe. It just seems like a great right. program. It is. And and I know how to pick them. 
What's that? Yeah. And there's breaks. And we get breaks. <laughs> yep. Yeah, well, so, I just said you guys have like a month off right now. We have like three months off. Oh my goodness, what? Yeah, we, we don't go back until July. Yeah. What am I doing? What do you do with all that time? Do you work? Do you just like, do they give you homework or something? Mm-mm. They say don't do anything because they'll give wow. us everything. So they say just relax and enjoy the summer. Enjoy the break. For me, I'm turning 30. So Ooh, happy birthday. I'm gonna, thanks. Well, it's in June. I'm turning 30 in June. So okay. I'm going to plan something. I don't know. I might just sleep all day because I'm getting old. But, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Not June 19th, are you? June 18th. Oh, I'm June 19th. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah crazy Gemini's. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's cool. That's yep. really cool. Uh, shoot, what was I going to ask? What were we just talking about? We were talking about the different program. Oh, yeah, just the vibes of the two different programs, like the super mm-hmm. accelerated ones versus the ones that give you a little more time. So mm-hmm. we had one break. We had Christmas break, which was like a month. And they gave us this whole EKG book to read and be tested on the first day after after that break. Wow. So literally no time to rest whatsoever. They they said, here's your oh. like three or four weeks off, whatever, five weeks. But also here, master EKGs and be ready to be tested by the time we get back. That's insane. So that's the vibe of my program. Wow. But that, that, that had to be to tough. Off like six months. Yeah. Wow. It's, that's... What is yours? 30 months? 33. 33. So your program is literally, what is that? Nine months? Nine months longer than my program. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the vibe of two different programs. It's like your hair on fire if you have hair. Hair's <laughs> on fire like 24-7 for two whole years without any break. Or you get to like learn and then take a break and then vibe and then go back. Mm-hmm. You know what's important to you? I, I personally think that the slower pace sounds a little better, but I'm saying think- that now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Damn, that's nice. I, I wish we had that. That would have been so much more pleasant. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I mean, I think you, like, just your story alone and, you know, what you had to do was enough motivation. But, like, besides just don't give up and don't quit, do you have any advice for people applying to PA school, especially those, like, low GPA kind of behind-the-line applicants? Yeah, I would say never give up and never let nobody tell you that you can't do it because you can do it. And my other advice for low P or low GPA students, I would say maybe take a look at all your classes to see like where you can um, where you can boost your GPA. Maybe if you had some C's on your transcript, like I did, like maybe retake those. Or if you didn't take certain classes, like for me, I didn't take um, biochemistry. I didn't take genetics in undergrad, so I took those two classes after. And it helped really boost my GPA. And I also took bio one. So that was a great booster too, because, you know, I had all that knowledge from my upper levels. So it's it pretty easy. Um, and you never so took bio one. Not an undergrad. That, no. That's just amazing to me. That, that is so <laughs> absolutely amazing to me. But yeah, I'm not I gonna, never did. <laughs> I'm not going to dwell on that. That's just amazing that like <laughs> this girl got, what was your major bio? Bio. Mm hmm. Yeah, so we have a bio major who took a bunch of upper levels and never took intro to bio. That's crazy. I don't know I'm how I'm not going to call out your undergrad, but like, because we're not going to say my name, but what the, I don't want to swear, but what, like, what the crap, dude? Like, <laughs> was that even possible? Do you have, like, you don't even have an advisor. You said yeah, you had well, an advisor, but like, how is it possible that you have an advisor and they don't tell a bio major to take bio? I don't know. Well, Winthrop, they did try to like, yeah, because I went to a community college beforehand. And I think they really screwed me up and went through trying to like put in those pieces, but they still missed a piece. They still missed some pieces. Like, yeah, doesn't the degree have requirements starting with bio one? (laughs) Like what? Make it make sense. I think because they, I think because they saw I took micro and they, and I took anatomy and I passed, even though I got a C, they were like, oh, she don't need it. She'll be fine. Oh, they just assumed you already took it. No, they saw my transcripts. So I don't know why I didn't. I don't know why I never took it. I have no idea. I, I can't tell you. I don't know. My hands are up in the air on that one. I have no idea. Oh my God. I don't know. <laughs> the longer I'm alive, the more surprised I am that the world isn't just always on fire. Because the incompetence out there is just 10 out of 10. Everywhere. It's insane. Yeah, like, it's crazy. Oh, like, it's how? crazy. <laughs> Even in like higher ed. You yeah. know what I mean? These people aren't like cleaning dumpsters. These people are higher education. Mm-hmm. Oof. I, I yes. bet you the dumpster cleaner people would be smarter than a lot of those folks. 
Let but, me tell you. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, no, a lot of people in college. Day. True. Just yeah. a lot of people in college and even grad programs are are not very bright. We'll just put it yeah. that way. You know, like advantages or people like told them how to get there or whatever, but it's just cool. Okay, okay, we're not going to dwell on that. We're going to piss people off. Yeah, yeah. And I'll also say to um, pre-PA students with low GPAs, like, don't let your GPA define you as a person because it doesn't. Like, get shadowing hours, shadow multiple different specialties and, you know, see how each person works together with the PA so that you know, like, all the different aspects of every different career path. And then also, like, volunteer and also get the patient care experience the patient care experience is very very important just Mm -hmm. learning those basic like not basic but learn like how to talk to people in the healthcare setting is very very important so like schools will see like okay she has a lot of or she or he or i'll just say they they have a lot of you know personal experiences they have like a lot of things going on overall so this is a very good overall applicant and not just their GPA because your GPA don't define you at all. I'm going to push back on that and say your GPA doesn't define you until you fix it and then you get a good GPA and then you're just walking around like the most confident person ever. (laughs) That part. Yes. I mean like sometimes. It depends. If you're like taking one class, two class over six years, maybe you don't have that giant high of like having a good GPA for the first time ever. But Mm -hmm. like... So I had an awful high school GPA. I had an even more awful college GPA. Mm -hmm. And then the PA school thing, like I decided I wanted it. I did a post back, like a formal two semester post back. Mm -hmm. And like, I just, I didn't sleep. I watched every YouTube video on how to study trial and error. And first semester I got a 3.7 and I was walking around campus. Like, do these people know like that? I had (laughs) Because like, I just like, like I've never had success like that before. Any sort right. of anything above average. Never been above average in any way, shape, or form mm-hmm. my entire life. And then once those grades hit, it was like that's literally just the feeling you get. You're like walking around like you like drive a Bentley or something. You're like <laughs> I bet you she doesn't have a three point seven. I bet you that yeah. guy doesn't have a three point seven. <laughs> you know, and then the second semester was better because I figured out how to how to do how stuff. How to study. Mm-hmm. But at that point I wasn't on campus anymore, so it kind of went away yeah (laughs) but yeah you let your gpa define you if you if you fix it and you you know that's good things about you absolutely but if it's not there yet don't you worry it it will it will be exactly (laughs) exactly i love that edit (laughs) absolutely yeah don't don't like feel bad about feeling really good about yourself if you put in the work and you got your achievements you absolutely exactly deserve it i agree with that i agree absolutely (laughs) (laughs) um Okay, well, what are we missing here? Advice. So this is like your basic advice for PA school applicants. What about just like the whole application process? Because nobody really walked you through it. Nobody right. did. And it was hard. Um, yeah. So with the application process, I tried to start. Mm, which cycle? You want to talk about the first cycle, second or third? <laughs> well, first off, how many application cycles did you have? How many times did you apply? Three. You applied three times? Yes. Over the course of how many years, though? Six. So six years, you applied three times? Yes. Okay. Uh, so how about just tell me about the first one versus the last one? The first one, and you're, like, figuring it all out, and it's overwhelming mm-hmm. to the last one, where you're like, all right, I've done this three times. I got this. Right. Okay. So for the first one, I had no idea what I was doing. No idea at all. Wait, they talked about, like, having letters of recommendation and doing this and doing that. I'm like, I have to reach out to these people to write me letters to say that, you know, I'm a good person to go to PA school. I have to put in these volunteer. I got to remember everything I did for volunteering. I got to do shadowing hours. I got to do this. I got to do that. Oh, it was, it was overwhelming. It was very, very overwhelming. So getting through it, the first cycle, I think I applied super late. I think I applied maybe, it opens in April usually. And I think I applied like in December. So that was my first mistake. I applied way too late. I passed. December? Yeah, it was bad. It was so What bad. school even still has a deadline before December? <laughs> Some do, like South College do does. They? Um, okay. Yeah, they, theirs is in March. Wow. And then, like, there are some schools that have, like, January and stuff like that. But I applied super late. And looking back, I'm like, oh, that was a really bad decision on my part. And then also, like, trying to write out all of the um, – 
experiences that I did, trying to remember all the dates that I did them, going back in the emails to remember everything. And they're trying to write a personal statement. I'm like, I have to write about myself. What am I supposed to say about myself? I have no idea. I don't know how to talk about myself. Like, Can we take a break here for a sec? And mm-hmm. again, point out the difference between someone who's like figuring this out on her own versus mm-hmm. someone who has somebody to guide them mm-hmm. in one of two ways. One, like a family member, friend, somebody who's got some advantages where they know PAs, nurses, doctors, or someone who pays a mentor like myself or has someone like Brianna help them. Mm-hmm. Uh, just like mentorship how important mentorship is. So that yes. whole experience that Brianna just described, like that's that's hell because you're like, wait a minute, I have to do all this? I thought right. I just have to click apply. There's, right. there's so much. Whereas somebody who has a mentor, whether it be like mm-hmm. I said, family member, friend, or just like a professional mentor uh, like myself, what we would tell you is, oh, you started your PCE job. Okay, record the date, start recording your hours, start collecting your timesheets. Mm-hmm. Already talk to your boss about getting that letter written to prove your hours. Right. Start writing to exactly what the job description is, and boom! By the time you get to CASPA, five minutes. You just put that all in. Right. You're done. You're ready. Same with letters of recommendation. Oh, who who did you just meet a PA? Do you think she would write you a letter of recommendation? All right, talk to her now because in six months that letter is going to be written and done and submitted. Right. You know. Oh, uh, you retook a class. Why don't we put down everything into the GPA calculator and then get mm-hmm. ready to put those classes in get your transcripts ordered now so you have them in front of you instead of having to wait, you know, three months. Right. All of that could have literally been done on day one if somebody told you to do it right, but of course you didn't have somebody. So you struggled like crazy. Yeah, I went on a whim. I was like, I I don't know what I'm doing. Then I have to pay all this money to apply to. Oh, it was a struggle. It was a struggle. But versus my last time, my third cycle, I, um, I think I started shadowing the PA in maybe October of the year before applying. And I told her, like, I'm applying to PA school. I want to be a PA, you know, maybe in the future, if you feel comfortable, can you like write me a letter of recommendation? And I had a professor from my undergrad, like I kept in contact with her. She already knew, like, I want to be a PA. So I just kept in contact with her, kept her updated with like everything that was going on. I was like, okay, in like how many months? Seven months, I'm going to apply to PA school. Like, do you mind like getting the letter ready? Then I talked to one of my um, charge nurses that I was working with. I was like, okay, so in like seven months, I'm going to apply to PA school. Like, do you mind writing me a letter? So that they have plenty of time to write those letters of recommendation so that they're ready and prepared. And then also, like you said, like I wrote down all the dates of like my patient care experiences. I kept up with all the times that I, or all the hours so I put that into like a um excel spreadsheet mm-hmm. so it can like add up all my hours for me and then I also put in all my volunteer into that same spreadsheet and then I also like got a whole bunch of schools I made this huge spread it looks crazy it looks so crazy but I made this huge spreadsheet and I put like probably over 100 schools on it I put their stats I put my GPA, I put what they require as a GPA, I put my science GPA on, I put my number of volunteer hours. Now I was more strategic about what schools I was going to actually apply to. Because I'm like, okay, this is my third cycle. I want to make sure that I'm applying with the purpose and not just applying on a whim. So I was I was prepared. I was way more prepared because I knew like in the past I wasted a lot of money applying to schools when I really essentially I wasn't ready. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know how to properly write a personal statement. And then I also went through a, like a personal statement editor. I think I did my pre PA resource. I think, no, my PA resource, I believe I used. And then Savannah Perry, I did like her, her oh, she's um, awesome. workshop. Yeah, I did her workshop and I didn't know about that before. And then I also like talked to other people on Facebook and stuff like that. So I made sure my experiences were strong, like written very strong. I made sure my personal statement was like top notch personal statement. I made sure everything was inputted in the right way so that when it came time for Casper to open, I can just hit apply and I was ready. I was ready for everything. Like my transcript, my transcripts, I had already um, inserted them beforehand. So all I had to do was like carry it over instead of like having to redo everything. I just had to add like one or two classes that I had taken like in that last semester. So my How first much? cycle, 
I, how I, much oh. can you do early before? So like CASPA opened on April 25th this year. How much can mm -hmm. you do before that even happens? So you can put in your transcripts, right? Mm -hmm. Can you get them verified already before the April 25th deadline? I don't think so. I don't, well, mine was already verified because okay. I had applied previously. So most of my classes were verified. They only had to yeah. verify like a, a few classes that I had input it because okay. my second cycle I had to take in some classes that's a whole another story so I didn't have a lot of verification that was needed so it, it was a little bit faster for me but I don't think that, that they verify before okay the cycle opens and for me hmm. or for the cycle for the application I don't think that you can see and like type in before it opens I was just prepared for it because I already knew what to expect because I had already applied two cycles prior so I kind of already knew like how to write yeah. out my experiences. I already knew like the layout of CASPA and like everything that they ask. They ask for like certifications. They ask for like your hours. They ask. I already knew like everything they ask. So I was kind of prepared for. Can you um? Can you everything. request your letters of recommendation sooner? Mm -mm. You have to wait till it opens. Okay. Yeah. So the letters verifying any grades, all of that has to be after it's open. Yes. Okay. Yes. So you I can do a everything... lot before it opens up but not everything yeah i think you have to do like everything after it opens but like if you open or if you create an account before the previous cycle opens you can like start working on it but um they won't verify until you actually pay for the first school so like you can download the casp application so you have everything saved that you already worked on in the previous cycle so that you'll be ready for the next cycle so i think you have to apply as like a reapplicant, even if you don't um apply that last cycle but because you opened up a caspa account like you have you'll have to just apply as a reapplicant instead of like a you know just a regular first time applicant so there are certain things you can work on before they close it but it'll be like for the previous cycle and not for the next cycle so you can just download it and save everything and then just re-input it and it's like super easy for like classes it transfers over if you do like get it verified first but other stuff it doesn't transfer over you can just save it and just copy and paste it into like the new application gotcha and for those of you who haven't gone through casper yet all of that didn't make any sense but for those of you that are going through it you're probably like okay i appreciate you telling me all this stuff <laughs> uh so we'll just call that section casper advice because that was like super duper specific but like people who are doing this optimally like the best way that you possibly can they're doing exactly what you did that third cycle. They got their grades. They got everything in that they possibly can. And then everything else, they're ready to go as soon as it opens. Mm -hmm. You know, getting uh, verifications, getting the uh, the letters officially requested, all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Right. I also really want to double back on what you said about the letters. I think you have the perfect collection of letters because you had a physician mm -hmm. assistant. You mm -hmm. had an MD with whom we, of course, work closely. And you had a charge nurse who's like the top dog RN who's like ju technically just under you in the hierarchy. So they have to like you if you're going to be an effective mid-level provider. So you kind of have like the full range. And I think you had a professor too, right? Yeah, I didn't have an MD. I had a professor. Oh, there so it is. A, oh. a PA, a charge nurse, and a professor. I think that's perfect. Mm -hmm. Getting an MD in there too would have been cool. But I, yeah, I think that was, <laughs> instead of having like three PAs or three nurses or three professors, I think what you did is excellent. Mm -hmm. You know, because think about like who they would want to hear that you know, thinks highly of you. A professor, definitely. Are mm -hmm. you good in, in school? Are you good in class? Are you a hard worker? Right. Are you academically capable? The school wants to know about that because they want to know, are you going to get in or are you going to be able to make it through? Mm -hmm. um, a nurse, because can you work with people who, you know, can you respect other people in the healthcare field, not just providers? Right. And a PA, obviously, you know, one of us, one of us, we're trying to get her to join the club. So are you like, do people who are PAs like you? Mm -hmm. So, all those are, you just had a very good constellation of people writing you letters. That's something to think about. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was very well-rounded to get, like, just a bunch of different people from a bunch of different, like, perspectives of, of me. Like, this person saw my work perspective. This person saw, like, my, per, or my perseverance to be a PA. And then this person saw my academic side of me. So each person saw a different part of me and they were able to write about something different about me yeah i mean literally every part of your application 
if you think about it a little bit from like the shoes of the person or put yourself in the shoes of the person reading your application, think about what they would want to see. That's definitely one of those things mm -hmm. that people are probably like, oh, it's like an afterthought. Like, oh, who's going to write my letter of recommendation? They like ask their friend, their mom, and I don't know, their neighbor. And it's like, okay, this person is nice. Cool. And <laughs> so like what Brianna did was ask all those people that really describe different aspects of her life, which I think is excellent. So definitely something to think about. You know, it, it's an afterthought for a lot of people, but it's definitely something to think about. Also, I was watching one of my very old videos pop up because I was making a TikTok out of it. Mm -hmm. And when I interviewed the dean of admissions at the school I went to, and she said letters of recommendation, especially if you struggled academically, letters of recommendation are just another place to explain, you know, why that was and how you overcame it. If like, for instance, a professor or an academic advisor, somebody you knew in college uh, saw that and saw you overcome it, they can talk about it. So right. it's just yet another place to say good things about yourself if those things need to be said. Right. So, yeah. Stuff that people don't think about, you know, letters of recommendation are super important and they can be used for a lot of good things. Mm -hmm. uh, and so before my overheating phone and laptop die, and since we've gotten through all of our little topics on our sticky note, is there any parting words or anything else you really want to say to uh, would be PA students, PA school applicants, people in your position? Um, I would say good luck on everything. Well, obviously. You got this. <laughs> Everything will be fine. You will get there. And just be positive. Be positivity in yourself. And like if people don't want to be positive around you, just turn their words into something else that is positive and then prove them wrong. You will get there. Everything will be just fine. And work your butt off. And work your butt off. That part yeah. too. <laughs> you can't like manifest these things. You have to put in the work. <laughs> Absolutely. But if you put in the work and you stay, you know, keep perseverance, even if you have no advantages, nobody mentoring you, nobody helping you, you feel like it's impossible. Okay. Maybe this year it's impossible. Next year it's not. Now you know mm -hmm. you're doing Right. Right. And if it takes that you six true. years like Brianna to get where you needed to go, then, then it does. Who cares? And that's okay. It was only two years. You right. know, and then you're gay and it's all worth it. Right. Trust me. It, it's worth it. Yes, <laughs> like, absolutely. From someone who's been through it, I can tell you it's worth it. Brianna's halfway through it. She can tell you it's worth it. It's worth it. Yeah. I really, I really, really hope that the audio and video on this one turn out okay. Uh, because this was such an important interview and so just like positive and uplifting. And I, I feel like a lot of people are going to get so much out of what you had to say. Uh, so I'm going to check just in case you guys don't know, like why the angles are so weird and why the sound might sound weird is my laptop <laughs> like overheated. So I switched to my phone real quick which doesn't have much battery. And, you know, we just, we made it work because I really wanted to share Brianna's message here on this platform. So if for whatever reason it stinks, we might have to record this again and I'll have That's to bribe fine. Brianna with Chipotle or something, <laughs> uh, but it'll work out. I'll be happy to, to record it again if I have to. More I mean, happy. I hope not because like you can't yeah. recreate all the spontaneous stuff you said, but like That's true. <laughs> it happened, we'll get it out there. But yeah, right. thank you so much for taking the time to do this. Of course. Of course. And she already said good luck to everybody. So, yeah, good luck to you all. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, this should be out probably sometime in June when you guys are kind of like in the heat of the application cycle. So if anyone's feeling down about their chances, if someone told them that they weren't smart enough to do this, any of that, I just really hope that this gives you some hope from two people who collectively took, what, 10 years to try to get into school? More? So, <laughs> you know, both of which are happy with our our state of things. So don't lose hope. Keep the grind on and you'll get there. Mm -hmm.